white ship. She was one of the fastest vessels that was ever built. The man who should be king of the English now, the son of King Henry, was on board when she sailed off. And with the prince there were 140 knights and many nobles, all on their way from Normandy to England. They say the ship hit the rocks, and then a fire broke out. Even before the white ship had departed, the prince and his men had begun to drink and get violent. Monks that were meant to bless the voyage were then forced to disembark. Some say the ship had been cursed. The king's son and many of his family were pulled down into the Black Sea that night. You're forgetting one important detail. Not only these monks, but also Stephen of Blois, the king's nephew, left the ship before it embarked. They say he got ill. That old rumor. The same Stephen who calls himself the King of the English now. What? That cannot be a coincidence. Yes, it can be. Of course he's king now. He survived. He is the king's nephew. What do you think, my lord? I think Stephen is a clever man. Clever enough to have his whole family perish. But why he would want to rule that godforsaken rock, I will never understand. What makes you say that? I love my country. Then why are you leaving? Well, because I want to see something new. I'll tell you what you're going to see. A proper country, where people know how to behave. What about you? Why are you leaving? I had no reason to stay. Really? Huh. Uh, I, I guess I should stay out of other people's business. Forgive me. You English do talk a lot, don't you? I just don't know how to feel about leaving my country for the first time. I mean, how should anyone feel? Hopeful? I don't know. Maybe I'm just running away. You should all get some rest. It will not be long now till we reach Sherbrooke. Thank the Lord, I can't wait to be back. In the late summer of 1142, I had left my home country, England, for good. My old life lay in shambles, as did my former home of Kingsbridge. 
Having failed both my friends and family, I had set out to find my baby's father, the man I still loved with all my heart, Jack Jackson. And so early one morning in July, I finally arrived on the shores of Normandy. With nothing on me but a pouch of coin and a young, curious face yet unnamed, who was just as unfamiliar to this new world as was I. You're still here. Oh, it's you. I'm just trying to get my feet used to good solid ground again. The last bit of our voyage wasn't exactly my pint of ale. That hammer you're carrying, do you happen to be a mason? Actually, I am. You have a keen eye, mistress. I guess I just know a mason when I see one. To be honest, I haven't been one long just finished my apprenticeship in Salisbury. Before that, I used to shear sheep with my parents, but I guess that wasn't really for me. Father still hates me for leaving, though. I left my old life as well. Scary, isn't it? To start off fresh and all that. Well, you definitely sound more excited than scared. Oh, I am excited. Wouldn't anyone be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. What will you do to find work here as a mason? Don't know. That's for me to find out. All I heard was that the wages are better over here. So you'll just travel from town to town and look for employment? Right. And I'll start in Lassay. A fellow mason told me about the abbey there. He said these Normans build their churches quite differently than we do back home. I need to see that with my own eyes. Maybe learn a thing or two. Do many Masons go to Lassay? Ah, I don't know. It's really just a tiny town. The Mason who told me just happened to do some repairs there once. It's likely he told others as well. I'm looking for someone. A red-haired Mason called Jack Jackson. He came to France about a year ago or so. A fellow Mason? Great. Unfortunately, I wouldn't know a thing. After all, I just arrived here with you. I know, but should you meet someone like that on your journey, tell him Aliena of Shiring is looking for him. All right. Jack Jackson. I'll keep an eye out for you. Thank you. Have a safe journey. Oh, thank you. You too. Good day. I am looking for someone. A traveller who came through here last summer. Oh, hush now. I, I need to talk to this man. Looks young. He was born at the beginning of summer. What's his name? I haven't given him one yet. You should. He needs to know who he is. Makes growing up a lot easier. You said you're looking for someone. I'm looking for the boy's father. From the look of your baby, I reckon his father has red hair like me, right? 
Well, I don't know every redhead around these parts. There are quite a few of us. Most of my family here in Cherbourg is Ginger. Oh, his name is Jack Jackson, and he is a mason. Hmm. No. No, sorry. I haven't seen him. And I come here every day. Or maybe a May saw him. She helps the sailors get their cargo to the nearby towns. And carries travellers, too. I'll ask her. Well, thank you. Hey, you. That's quite a bundle you got there. Where are you headed? Have you seen a red-haired mason? You must have landed here sometime late last summer. <laughs> Another ginger in Normandy? I wouldn't have noticed, even if he was carrying a hammer instead of a fishing rod. Maybe you should ask someone in Barfleur. That's where all the travellers come through, the pilgrims and kings. Their lot rarely lands in Cherbourg, with the fortress passing back and forth between Stephen of Blois and Geoffrey of Anjou. Why you even came to Cherbourg in the first place baffles me. It was the earliest ship I could get. You must be in some hurry, madam. Let's just say I needed to get away before I changed my mind. Fine with me. Who am I to judge? What other routes are there besides going through Barfleur? Oh, I don't know, really. You need to ask the locals about that. But Barfleur sounds like a good place to start. Shake my hand and I'll take you there. Do you know the road to Lesse? Been there, seen it. But I hope you're not planning to go there on foot. Tell you what, you give me some coins and I'll treat you to me wagon. You can even change your destination once we're on the road, would you say? All right, take me out of town. All right, where do you need to be? We went to Barfla, a scenic port town built on granite. It was the biggest harbour in Normandy and the main entry point for the Normans to their new possession of the Isle of England. I talked to some of the sailors and fishermen, but no one had remembered seeing Jack. How could they? Almost a year had passed since he, a simple mason, had journeyed through the busy town, a town with no memory other than that of the last king who passed through on yet another one of his violent conquests. Maybe I was approaching this the wrong way. What had drawn him to France in the first place? The distance to Kingsbridge? Or something specific? What was my lead? Lassay was tiny, but as it turned out, worth the trip. In the small abbey church of the Trinity, I met a monk who claimed to have talked to a man fitting Jack's description. He'd been fascinated by the abbey's rib vaulting and had asked the monks countless questions about the place's construction. The monk apologized that he couldn't tell me where Jack had traveled next, but I didn't mind. I lay down to sleep on the floor of the Abbey Guest House and, for the first time in almost a year, I felt relief. As I drifted into sleep, I hugged our baby tight and whispered into his tiny pink ear, we're going to find your daddy. My father had once told me tales of the Mont Saint-Michel. Long ago, 
The archangel Michael had urged Hubert of Avranche to build an abbey on a lonely rock on the ocean by burning a hole into his head. They say one can go and see his penetrated skull on display in the church of his hometown. It was a windy day when I arrived, and the place was crowded with pilgrims, pilgrims and jongleurs. I remembered Jack's fascination with these tellers of stories. I spoke to one who was just taking a break. As it happened, he had indeed met Jack, although not in Mont Saint-Michel, but on a road heading east from there. Apparently, Jack had been hopelessly tracking Jongleur, who might have known his father, Jack Cherberg. But as he'd been gradually running out of money, he'd intended to look for work in Le Mans or Tours. That was about six months ago. I was catching up. Going to Le Mans reminded me of all the trouble I'd left behind in England. Thirty years ago, Le Mans had been conquered by the Plantagenet Geoffrey of Anjou, Maud's husband. And although they'd held it ever since, other noble families kept on pulling at the city, like Maud and Stephen tearing at England. There was no sign of Jack, but I got news of a new kind of cathedral being built in Saint-Denis, just north of Paris. It was possible that Jack had gone there to learn from the craftsmen, that was, if he hadn't travelled further south, looking for work in one of the many churches in Tours, the hometown of Saint-Martin. Day. Are you the master builder? What is it? I'm looking for a mason who may have passed through here. An Englishman with carroty hair. He calls himself Jack Jackson. Hmm. A redhead? Yes. Did you see him? He might have asked for work here. No, no. I I'm not looking for new masons. We're just doing repairs. Ah, but was he here? No, never seen him. Now, stand back, woman. Something could fall on your baby's head. I was told he wanted to come here. Well, maybe he changed his mind. Are you sure you haven't seen him? I am. You hesitated when I mentioned a redhead. Are you sure you haven't seen him? Yes, I am sure. I don't believe you. Well, that's your problem, not mine. Why won't you tell me what you know? <sighs> all right, all right, he was here was working for me, but I had to throw him out after two or three days. Why? Because he was all want, want, want. Let me redesign the roof. Let me make the nave lighter. All pretty ideas, but he never shut up long enough to do the work he was supposed to do. Shit, that man was almost as needy as my son when he was still a brat. Mm, he does know a lot about his craft. Well, I know Masons like him. They grow up gifted, but without a moat of discipline in their guts. Can't work with someone like that. Do you know where he went next? No idea. Maybe to Limoges or Angoulême. Maybe even to La Rochelle. Seemed to have plans for every cathedral on God's green earth, but none for himself. I understand. 
I'll leave you to it then. Bon voyage. We had just left Tor when I suddenly felt dizzy. I stopped and made rest, trying to catch my breath, then lost my breakfast in a ditch at the side of the road. To my horror, our baby too had grown pale, his breath shallow like that of an old man. I tried not to panic, but the next inn was a long distance away and we couldn't stay on the road where it was wet and cold. Back in Tor, the fever got worse. I remember people carrying me into a room, laying me on a bed. I tried to feed my baby, but after that, everything turned into a blur. When I awoke, Jack was standing next to my bed. He scolded me for following him. You know you could go anywhere you want, he whispered. Why be stupid and follow me? I tried to answer, but he just opened the window and jumped out, heading toward ancient Greece, or maybe all the way to Arabia. And in my feverish mind, I followed him. The further I went, the angrier I got. For years I'd been fighting for my family. I'd committed myself to an oath to my father. I'd built up a business to sustain it and even married a man I despised so I could create a future for the people around me. I'd known nothing but my duty to the men in my life, while the man I was trying to find live a life of casual irresponsibility. He travelled the world on a whim to learn about mathematics and philosophy while I had to raise the child he'd fathered. When could I ever do anything just for myself? I asked the world as I went on. I'd travelled in a circle all the way to the edge of the world and back, only to return to the place of our failure. With my eyes closed, I listened to the sound of ripping yarn and crumbling walls, and of coaches carrying good people away into a cloud of crimson dust. When the last moat had settled, I opened my eyes again and found myself in a dirty little room. An old maid was sitting next to my bed and smiled at me, then handed me my baby. Oh, dear God, he still looked so pale. I tried to feed him, but he refused. Please, God, let him live. Don't punish him for my own sins. I gently caressed his head until finally he put his mouth to my breast and drank and drank more and more, becoming greedier with every swallow. We had both been spared. We rested one more day. Then I gathered my things and headed back to the cathedral to thank the Lord for his mercy. <laughs> 